Hello, madlang people, mabuhay! Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be talking about how to be a force to be reckoned with through attraction. So life is full of tractors and chasers. Cats chase mice and mice attract cats. Prey and predator, but not a good kind of attracting and chasing which involves death but... Oh well. The sun attracts sunflowers. Pollen is always sought by bees. These bees work hard to gather, process, and eventually turn the pollen, you, into a honey masterpiece. In a marathon, the prize attracts the runners, while the runners chase the golden trophy. So be the prize. The diamond attracts miners, not the other way around. Be a diamond. You should be chased because you are expensive, worthy, and valuable to man, and most especially, you are valuable to God. And that is why don't chase, attract. So we all know that there are many people, and I mean many people, yes dear, many people chase after those that they want to chase. For example, you like a guy, or you have a dream that you really want to achieve. But then reality, well, reality strikes and you have to beg for something. You beg for money from your parents, you beg mercy from your teachers, you beg affection from a lover or a friend or a potential someone. You shouldn't be the one begging. You shouldn't be the one trying or working too hard to gain the approval or the validation or whatever it is that you're after. Attract it. Let it come to you. Let it be the one to find you. Know your worth as a child, as an adult, as an elderly, a student, a teacher, a son or daughter, mother, father, and most of all, especially, know your divine worth as a child of God, as a child of the God of the universe. The world has two sides of the coin. The shining, shimmery individuals who attract and those who chase after them in the spotlight. Now, why do you think people are influenced by dazzling K-pop idols, mind-blowing geniuses, who are absolute rays of sunshine, charismatic leaders, and personality flexible professors? Why? Because they are? Yeah, they are attractive, in simultaneously different ways than one. It could be because of their character, their fashion sense, their beauty, their wealth, their ideals and goals, their talents, their humor, and last but not the least, their spirituality. But it shouldn't be that way. You shouldn't be the one begging. You shouldn't be the one trying or working too hard to- Then why in the world do the influenced people chase? Simple. Because they aspire to become, or at least be a step closer to the ones that they, that they look up to. Let's put this concept in a real life situation, shall we? I am a student with an average brain, average looks, average creative abilities, a poor relationship with numbers, and traumatizing time management skills. Basically, I'm a recipe for disaster, but yeah, no pun intended. In this case, I would want to chase after the top students in their grades to hopefully acquire their skills in academics and live an eventful life as that student. But here's the truth. Just because I want something doesn't mean that I have the means or the capability to get or do it. After all, I'm not perfect. Well, nobody is, so... I am a human being with countless and very realistic flaws. So what should I do? I can't force mathematics into my head when my brain just straight up malfunctions whenever I see numbers, can I? So what do I do? I glance at them from time to time, and then I focus on me. What am I good at? What are my weaknesses? Will they affect me in the long run? Am I the problem? It's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. Or is it something else? Can I do something to improve in this aspect? Or is it simply something that isn't meant for me? If it's the latter, Honey, don't push it. For you and me both, 
we can try to be decent at whatever imperfections or shortcomings we have, but we don't have to force ourselves to become the best or be an expert in it. As long as we can do it properly, decently, or even just a little bit above average, we're fine. Now you might be thinking, but Katie, I want to be the best. I have to be exceptional. My family has Everest standards. It is hard for you to hear this and you probably won't even believe me. But you matter most to the God who created and made you into a masterpiece. Your worth is not determined by your achievements, abilities, or whatnot. The validation you should be searching for is not human validation, but divine acceptance. No, scratch that. Attract it. God's opinion of you, his love, and care for you further exceeds that of your family and friends. Don't believe me? We're gonna prove that in, in a while. Not because you deserve it, but because God loves you and he wants to. So attract that validation from above, not from the world here below. Because we are flawed, the world is flawed. Baby, believe me. I know how you're feeling. I wouldn't believe me if I heard what I was saying to you earlier. Been there, done that, and trust me, I wouldn't wanna go through it again. I was this little girl who was always trying too hard to be perfect and likable, but I wasn't aware of it back then. I always thought that it was normal to hustle, to grovel, to be pleasing, to fit in, to be accepted. I was a girl in a village doing alright. Not quite alright. I used to be so perfectionistic and insecure that nothing I did especially in academics, never really satisfied me that much. Yeah, it never really satisfied me that much. I had these perfect plans, but the execution was flawed. I wasn't perfect, I'm still not perfect, but I've learned to accept that fact because I don't have to chase after perfection anymore. I can just attract God's grace once again, not because I deserve it, but because he wants to give me that privilege. Don't chase perfection because from the beginning of the world, you were made perfect. Don't chase someone. Attract them. Especially if God gave his go signal. Do not you dare. Just don't. It won't work out and we both know it. Unless the big guy in heaven says yes, it's doomed from the get-go. So, just don't. Like how it says in Psalms 27 verse 14, Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Don't chase after people, after success, after achievements, after validation. Attract them. Don't chase, attract. So how in the world do we attract people? Here are some ways we can attract without any chasing. Here are some to-dos or reasons we can attract when it comes to number one, self-worth. My worth is what I am worth to God, and that is a marvelous great deal, according to William Temple. What are you worth? Do your grades define you? Do achievements define your worth? They shouldn't. What you can offer shouldn't be the deciding factor for your worth, because your worth was given to you by God. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, we shall see him as he is. This means that we are children of God. We are precious because he has made us. And we don't even fully recognize our full potential yet. But when he comes, when we start to get to know him, when we fall in love with him, we will start seeing ourselves as he sees us. We are clothed with Christ himself. Romans 13, 14. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Isaiah 54, 10. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Matthew 10, 31. 
with all these verses in the Bible, here comes God's promise that we are more than worth it. Him sacrificing himself for us on the cross proves that we are worthy. And we don't have to beg for someone or we had we don't have to beg for people to like us because the God of the universe already loves us so much. So act like it, believe it, live it. Be that confident girl, be that confident boy who walks into class with his and her head held high just because you know that God loves you and that God is on your side. You don't have to prove your worth to anyone. With that kind of demeanor, with that kind of attitude and character, with that kind of aura, you attract people. They will end up wondering, what in the world do those people think? Why do they act like that? Those questions will be answered. They will be asking those questions and you will be the ones answering them. And afterwards, hopefully, those asking will be one of those people who answer. Number two, when it comes to talents, use it for the glory of God. So, you are good at singing. You are good at dancing. You are good at playing the guitar. You are good at making poems, making stories. You are good at teaching. You are good at speaking English. You are good at math. All those abilities, use it for the glory of God. Attract them. How do you attract them? This might be a little cliche and a little bit, I don't know, maybe boring for some of you. But pray for it. Because if you don't pray for your talents, and if you don't use them, you will end up losing them. And that is why attract them, furnish them. Polish them, and those around you will recognize and see the power behind those talents, and that it's God. Because you can't touch the people, you can't touch the hearts of people without the Holy Spirit. You can't appeal to their emotions through singing, through writing, through teaching, through whatever it is, without the Spirit. So attract them, pray for them, be different from the world. Your charisma, your manner, your way of speaking, your way of thinking, your talents, how you use them, be different and attract them. Attract the people and attract those talents. Number three, how to attract when it comes to education. Attract people through your demeanor and a character. How to do that? Well, like I said in the previous point, the talent part, people who see you act differently will end up asking, Who is he? Who is she? What does she do? Why do they excel so much? Why do they think like that? What or who do they believe in? Maybe I can become like them. The people around us will get attracted, curious, and our jobs as attractors is to direct them to Christ. Because these people are being attracted to us through Christ's influence in us. How can we be attractive if we don't have the attractive qualities in the first place? For example, to be honest, our attractiveness comes from God because we were made that way. But we on our own... We don't have anything. We don't have the power to attract. And that is why it is only God who gives us the power to attract. It is only through his influence that we can attract people around us. Number four, how to attract when it comes to dreams and goals. So show the world what you can do through the Lord who lent you the strength and power to reach them. You have these dreams and goals. How do you attract them? Use the talents, your education, your personality, your demeanor to attract them. If you want a certain job, you apply for a job. If we want something, we want to attract something, we should take action to get it. Number five, how to attract when it comes to family. 
or how do you attract other people's family through your own family? Why is that family so happy, so well put together? Why is their family so peaceful? Why are their kids so smart, beautiful, and pleasing to be with? Because they are God-centered. These families, or the family that we look up to, the seemingly perfect ones, but are still flawed in some ways. They are perfect, but they are flawed. These are the kind of families that may be poor, that may not be doing so well financially, but they are happy. You can tell they are happy. Their family is complete. The kids are well behaved. The parents have good relationship. And the siblings have no conflict. There may be some small arguments here and there, but nothing major. Basically, they're okay. So what what is it in them that makes them different? What makes them attractive? And why do they attract? Because they, they are God-centered. They are far away from the standards of the world. They are not broken like what is commonly seen in our society and they uplift each other they love each other not put them down when other people see that kind of family they would end up being attracted because they are different and they may maybe they want to have their own family like that number six how to attract when it comes to love john 4 19 we love because he first loved us first john 4 8 dear friends let us love one another for love comes from god everyone who loves has been born and knows of god there is what we call the love that everyone knows the romantic love familial love or filial love but the love that I am talking about here is agape, the God love. In 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 8, NIV, Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Take note, it keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But when there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. So, in this in this passage or in this verse, love is patient, love is kind. It has all the qualities that we desire in this world. We want a love that is secure. We want a love that is unselfish. We want a love that is honest, that keeps no record of wrongs. Love that doesn't blame others. Love that pulls you up, not down. And we can only find that kind of perfect love from God because no human being, not one, has achieved that and can never achieve that. So how do I attract love? How to not chase love? First off, because God has a perfect timing for everything. God has a perfect person for you and me. And we don't have to chase them we don't have to work hard to find them we don't have to go on dating apps we don't have to put ourselves out there and just enter relationships without any thinking because god has someone reserved for us now here are some reminders or yeah reminders for both men and women 
In Proverbs 12 verse 4, An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who shames him is like the rottenness in his bones. Girlies, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. Proverbs 31, 10-11 Godly women are, actually all women, are far more precious than rubies. And we should be treated with respect. But we should also respect our counterparts, our husbands, our male friends, our counterparts, our partners, they are worthy of equal respect. So find a virtuous woman. Attract a virtuous woman. No chasing. Your choice of a husband or wife should not be based on physical looks, but of good understanding and beautiful countenance. First Samuel 25 verse 3 Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make a helper fit for him. Genesis 2.18 in Ephesians 5.25, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, Husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church. So, men and women, look for partners, well, attract partners who love you as Christ loves you. Okay, and that's it for love. Let's move on to number seven. Faith. In Matthew 21 verses 22, verse 22, And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive, if you have faith. Luke one thirty seven. For nothing will be impossible with God. 2 Corinthians 5.7 For we walk by faith, not by sight. Romans 10.17 So faith comes from hearing through the word of Christ. Hebrews 11.6 And without faith, it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. There are people that make us wonder, why does he or she live his or her life like that? What makes them so comfortable? What makes them so happy? What makes them so beautiful as a person? What makes them so kind? What makes them so gentle? What makes them so loving? What makes them so compassionate? What makes them have that unwavering faith? Once again, it all points down to God. Their faith is the kind of faith that has been practiced, exercised, and nourished for many years. These people have the confidence because they have faith in the God of the universe. They have the assurance that God can help them, that God gives them strength, that God can move mountains, even with just a little amount of faith, even the size of a mustard seed. That size of faith can move mountains. So imagine how much more mountains God can move if you and I have more faith. If these people have more faith, we attract people, we attract change, we attract faith, we attract blessings. So to sum it all up, how to be attractive, how to be different in the midst of attractive people. In John fifteen nineteen, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Well, we can't help but some people hate us. We attract. And we also repulse. 
is just the fact of life. But we attract more than have haters. Ephesians 2.10 For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. In Romans 12.2 Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. 1 John 2 verses 15-17 Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Being different from the world not only assures or defines our attractive or the ability to attract, but also our salvation. Here are some examples of the people that I know in real life who are different from the world, who are not conformed to this world. And some people, famous personalities, that I haven't met yet, but I hear good things about them. So, first one is Doc, Doc R. Let's call her Doc R. She is a neurobiologist, and she is a churchmate of mine. Her personality is quite strong, so some people are intimidated by her. But believe it or not, lots of people love her, including me. She is attractive. She has good discernment. She is wise. She is beautiful. She is vegetarian. She is funny. She has a strong personality, like I said earlier. But she has a heart that is very, very kind. She is compassionate, considerate. And her students love her because she teaches well and because she helps them to be healthy. Next person, we have Tita L. I won't name them because they are real people. She has the kindest heart ever. She cooks for us. She prepares meals. She always accommodates us in our... She always accommodates us in our home. Her family is so welcoming. And she's just so compassionate and empathic that every time someone cries every time shares this every time someone shares this struggle she ends up crying with them that's how empathic she is and we also have Keanu Reeves he is always so kind he he lets older people sit in the trains he doesn't have that arrogant aura about him so what if there are these people? So what if we are different from the world? So what if I attract instead of chasing? Honey, if this still doesn't convince you, I don't know what or who can. Now, according to the scarcity principle, objects become more attractive when there are not very many of them. This scarcity may be either real or imagined. People assume that because others appear to want something and it, it is in short supply, it must be valuable. In other words, there are few people who are different from the world. There are few people who are attractive in a special, unique way. Because lots of people are beautiful. Lots of people are talented. Lots of people are good teachers. They are geniuses. But few of them are really not conformed to this world. Few of them are different. So let us recap how we attract and not chase. Let us recap. First, self-worth. Second, talents. Third, education. Fourth, dreams and goals. Fifth, your family. Sixth, love. And seventh, faith. Now with everything said and heard in this video, now I challenge you, think of something that you really want to have, something that you can help but chase, and then I dare you to attract it. Look back 5 to 10 years from now and see if you actually attracted the things you desired in this life, or the person you, you desired in this life. Don't chase, attract. I challenge you to be different. This is Katie, signing off. Bye!